Okay, uh, good evening. This is the February 8th, 2024 meeting of the Needham Conservation Commission. I'm Dave Herrer, Conservation Commission Chair. Before we get started, I'm going to confirm that all members and staff are present and can hear me. When I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Um, Sue? She's not here yet. Uh, Reed? Not here yet. Uh, Fred? Here. Allison? Here. Polina? Here. And the chair is here. So, Deb and Clay here. are here. Here. Okay, this is an open meeting of the Town of Needham Conservation Commission. Uh, it's being conducted remotely in accordance with Governor Healy's March 2023 extension of the open meeting law, temporary provisions. All supporting materials have been provided to members and are available on the Conservation Commission website. Uh, before we get started, let's go over a few uh, rules. Uh, I will introduce each hearing on the agenda and introduce the applicant and or their consultant for them to begin their presentation. After conclusion of the applicant's presentation, I'll call on each commission member to provide comments or questions. Please hold until your name is called. After comments and questions from the commission members, I'll solicit questions from the staff and then from the public. <clears throat> Please mute your, mute your phone or your computer if you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. Uh, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. And lastly, each vote taken during this meeting will be conducted via roll call. Okay, the first item on the agenda, minutes, we don't have any minutes, so, right? Okay, any uh, enforcement updates? No, okay, good. Uh, so, uh, the first item is 80 Gary Road. Let's open the hearing. Or uh, do you want to open the hearing? I guess we do. Okay. We open the hearing for 80 Gary Road DEP file 234-922. Uh, uh, this is an opportunity for the applicant to uh, give us a general overview of the project uh, because we got the uh, materials uh, late. Uh, we will not be deliberating uh, on this uh, application at this time. Um, I think we did have a presentation a couple of weeks ago. Uh, we noted that uh, we were interested in uh, how many trees were going to be uh, removed and how they were going to be replaced. And then uh, also uh, how this project would be uh, complying with the uh, stormwater bylaw. With town of Needham. So, who who do we have here from uh, re representing AD Gary Road? Yes. Hi there. Uh, good evening, Ryan Rosine. I'm with Goddard Consultant here on behalf of the applicant. Hi, Ryan. Hey. Um, I can. Sh I'll I'll keep it brief, like you and Clay said. Um, but I can share my screen just to go over a few of the updates of what we had submitted, if that's all right. Sure. Okay. I note that uh, Sue and Reed have. Uh, joined in. Yep. Hey. I'm here. <clears throat> yeah. Go ahead, Ryan. I was just trying to find the window. <laughs> okay. So. Oh, this is the different one. Oh, sorry. This is the second project. I got to yeah. find the find the right screen. Sorry about that. Oh, you the right you're presenting for the other project as well. Yeah, I'm here for the other one as well. The third right. item on the agenda. Great. Um, so yeah, so I'll I'll keep this brief. Uh Chris from my office had submitted some revised materials and some new information that the commission had requested. Um, that included a revised regulatory compliance narrative. We updated uh some of the numbers for the riverfront area. Some of those were slightly off from the original submittal, um, but they're now corrected. Um we also submitted the wildlife habitat evaluation, um, which I conducted along with Steve from my office and 
Uh, I assume you guys have not had enough time to go through that, but um, there's no shocker in there. It's, you know, a developed area. The backyard is full of invasive, so it doesn't offer too much in the way of wildlife habitat. But, um, you know, at the next meeting, I'd be happy to hear your thoughts and whatnot. Um, we also got the tree inventory completed. Um, we had ethical tree tree services, certified arborists um, go out to the site and um, survey all the trees. And so that was part of the application um, submitted to you as well, identifying all the trees sizes and their health condition as well. Um, and then also revised site plans. So I will just show the revised site plans real quick. Um, I'll zoom in here. So I think the main thing on this was showing the stormwater management calculations for the storm tech um, units that are proposed in the backyard there. So um, we're proposing four units. Um, it's designed for the one inch rainstorm, 451 cubic feet is required. Um, and so that's what we're providing for there. So, and then that's where they're, they're proposing the backyard right here. So I will, um, you know, you guys can review that um, in time for the next meeting. Um, and if you have any questions on that when, when looking it over, I'm, I'm sure Chris will be happy to answer it at the next meeting. Um, in addition to that, here's just a quick summary of the part, just one slide, one sheet of the tree inventory. Um, you can see here, so the backyard is mostly made up of red maples and uh, Norway maples of various sizes. Um, some of them are in you know, really good health, others are in fair or poor health, some are dying. Um, there's quite a few that are being choked out by the bittersweet or have died from the bittersweet. Um, and so I think it's still a little up in the air of which ones are being proposed to remove. However, I was discussing with my colleague Chris and, and then also the applicants that I think what what they would like to do is to remove um, all the Norway maples uh, within the site and then any of the other trees that are in um, poor health or fair health. Um, but I think that's still up for sort of, you know, going through that and figuring out which ones exactly. Um, and I think, you know, I'm, that may be something to discuss or, or just look at during the site visit whenever you guys schedule that. Um, and so, so you guys can actually see, see the state of the trees and then um, taking a deeper look into the, the tree inventory that was provided. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty much it. That's a kind of general overview of the materials that were submitted. Um, don't want to get into any more details than, than that necessary. And uh, just leave you guys with enough uh, information to give an overview and then you guys can review um, in time for the next meeting. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just have one quick question. Are you showing uh, where you're going to place the replacement trees? Yes. Yeah, so I think so here. So this was, um, I believe this was submitted in the original uh, notice of intent. So we're proposing to add additional trees. I think it's depending on how many trees are removed, it, it's approximately a one to one ratio of removal to replacement. Um, but I'm not entirely yeah. sure on that. I think it's. I mean, my, let me stop you right there. That does doesn't not uh, meet our guidelines. Our guidelines are two to one. Okay. Have you read our guidelines? Uh, well, I I have I did not see those guidelines. Um, like I said, I'm not. I was not the one who my colleague Chris was submitting this. Um, and I'm just trying to cover for him tonight. But we can make sure that it meets. It will have to meet your regulations, obviously. Um, so we'll be sure to make sure that it complies with that. Uh, but we are, just as a note, you know, we are adding additional species that aren't currently there. So we're kind of diversifying the area. Um, and another reason for some of the removal of the trees is to thin out the canopy, which could be beneficial um, for the habitat and the surrounding healthy trees that are there, as well as creating uh, some more open sun pockets to allow the shrub layer and the herbaceous layer um, that's being proposed um, to regenerate with native species and once we remove the invasive species. Okay, so um, like we said, we, we really don't want to deliberate uh, this yep. at this point. So um, 
we should continue this to our next meeting, which would be, uh, check my calendar here. February 22nd. Yeah, 22nd. So uh, can I have a motion to continue this hearing to uh, February 22nd? Dave, can I ask one question or do you want no comments at all? I, I, you know, you can, yeah, but I would okay. prefer not to get into a lengthy. Yeah, I don't want to get into a, anything okay. lengthy, but yeah, the, sure. Go ahead. I would, I would say is that although Norway maple is an invasive species, it does provide habitat. If there's a beautiful, great big Norway maple in the wetland buffer and it's not choking down other trees, I would not consider that for removal just because it's invasive. Yeah, no, I understand. And I think, like I said, that's sort of up for debate still, you know, if, you know, what the applicant is willing yeah, to that's do. All, that's what I wanted to say. Just yep, to no, I, I told you, and, and we'll make sure that that's, that's correlated to the applicant, that they understand that and everything. So thank you for that comment. All right, thanks. Well, hopefully, you know, by the next hearing, um, some of us will get a chance to see the site. Um, all right, so can I have a motion to uh, continue the uh the hearing for uh, 80 Gary Road, DEP file 234-922 to February 22nd. Motion to continue. Second. All right, let's vote here. Uh, Sue? Aye. Reed? Aye. Fred? Aye. Allison? Aye. Helena? Aye. And the chair wrote sign. All right, thanks, Ryan. And, All right, uh, thank you. See you in a couple of weeks. All right. The next hearing is for zero and seven thirty one South Street DEP file two thirty four dash nine two zero. Who is here to present for that applicant? Um, it is Dave from Kelly Engineering. I don't know. He's here, but maybe he stepped away from his computer or something. And um, Walter Upton, this is his as well. You got either of you, I see Dave Mackwell and uh, Walter Upton. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Both of them are on, looks like they're on mute, but. Uh... Uh, Dave is raising his hand, it looks like. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can yes. hear you. All right, great. And it doesn't seem like the camera's working. There we go. We'll turn it on anyway. I oh, thought yeah. I thought I was muted because it wasn't our hearing yet. I'm sorry about that. Oh, okay, we see. Um, good evening. My name is David Maxwell with Kelly Engineering Group, representing the applicant, Budge Upton. Um, for a uh, notice of intent to construct a uh, single family house and a driveway, a portion of which is in the buffer zone. Um, do you mind if I share my screen? I can bring up the plan. Sure, go ahead. Share screen. You want me to go over the background on this before you get into the presentation? Sure, I can. I was gonna just put up the plan and I'll talk talk through it. Is there, okay, is, I was just going to talk about the previous filings and where right. we're at with those. I mean, Deb, if you think the background okay, go ahead, Deb. To that'd be great. Thank you. Understanding, then go ahead. Yeah, no, I just figured. Um, so this project was originally filed in 2013, and um, it was not um, constructed. So um, um, they issued an order. So the order conditions was issued in 2013. It was never done and was closed out in 2018. And then they filed again for a very similar project in 2019. Um, but that project was never done either. Um, so they're looking to close out that permit that has expired tonight. Um, so now they have come in with a new notice of intent, um, but I believe it's identical to the filing that was submitted in 2019. It had just expired. Um, so that's just kind of the background. Okay, thanks. Thank you. 
Um, so can, can everybody see the screen? I'll bring any commissioners that are new to the commission or just bring everybody up to speed on the project itself, fill in a couple of um, uh, gaps of where we're at and then move, move forward. If you can make it a little larger. Okay, so it is as large as it gets on my screen. Okay, thanks. I don't, um, sorry about that, but I can, is that better? Yes. Okay, so I, I can zoom in as well. The whole property is uh, surrounded in the green line here that I'm tracing around. It's about a three and a half acre property. It consists of two parcels. Uh, 731 South Street is in the front where the existing home is, and 0 South Street is 2.2 acres and in the back. Uh, wetlands are identified here by Ecotech, John Rockwood, that were identified. Um, the line from 2018 was resurveyed by Kelly Engineering in an identical locations. Ecotech went back to the field to verify that the line is not moved. And um, we have a new wetland resource evaluation that's within the notice of intent as well. All the forms and fees have been paid. A request for closing out the old one is also included within the report to accompany NOI. And the lines that we're seeing here, the purple line on the hiss is the, is the edge of BVW and or uh, Bank of an Intermittent Stream. The first blue line is 25 foot no disturb. 25 foot buffer. Second blue line is the 50. The purple line is 100. And the, um, I guess we'll call it an orange line here, is the 100 foot buffer to a potential uh, vernal pool that's located in the top corner. Um, as Debbie had said, the proposal, the home, it hasn't changed since. Um, 2019 proposal, but the proposal is to reuse the existing driveway to this point here, and then a new 12 foot driveway be constructed with maneuvering into a new home in in the uh, the rear of the property. Listening to some of the uh, commissioners and uh, the last uh, project and talking to Deb a little bit, there's a few things about this project that were considered uh, both before and after. We have, um, on the design plan and within the notice of intent or stormwater calculations showing that we are uh, in well excess of the one inch uh, required by the stormwater management bylaw. Um, we're capturing about three inches over the footprint of the roof of the house, um, which is equivalent of greater than one inch if you include the driveway and the home um, for groundwater recharge. I'd also um, listened a little bit about the uh, tree removal and the policy and had a chance to, to digest that. The plan does show to remove, I think, nine or 10 trees. Uh, they're all called out on the plan. And the existing um, order, which we've reread and everybody's fine with, the applicant is on as well. All of the special conditions for the Norwood bylaw are all fine. And when I took a look at that today, there's a whole section 25 through 28 on tree work, which defers to the Needham policy. Um, and, you know, myself and the applicants have no problem um, continuing to adhere to those um, conditions that require the two to one replacement. There is no trees over, I think it's 32 inches requires three to one. They're all under, um, under that. Um, so in uh, respect of permitting, I think this is this one's fairly straightforward. The commission has approved it twice before, and our request is fairly straightforward with respect to pure buffer zone project. Um, within the notice, there's a full narrative on uh, local regulations relating to the 25 foot, 50 foot, 100 foot uh, buffer zone work. And um, we think we have a fairly straightforward project. Um, with that, knowing that we are at a public hearing and um, the town of Needham has a conservation commission of staff and there may be uh, concerned parties in the audience and through the chair, I would like to end my portion of the presentation and, um, and see what the, uh, the commission and the public have to say. All right, thanks. Um, uh, let me first ask our commissioners if they have any comments or questions. Uh, so I'll just go down the list here. Sue. 
Yeah, um, I just want to go back on the trees. Um, nine and ten trees are going to be removed. But what caliper are they? So, so you're saying that they're not, they don't meet the uh, requirements? They do meet the requirements. They don't meet the three to one requirements. I just took a fresh look at your tree removal um, policy. And if you have uh, trees that are significant over 32 inches, it's a three to one ratio. That's all. Okay, so, so you're planning on a two to one ratio replanting. Well, the thing that we're discussing here is the previous order and the conditions. The plan calls out every tree. I'm zoomed in a little bit. Every tree to be removed, like this one's a five inch, a 12 inch, and they're all detailed over here as well. Um, and the, the existing condition that's within the um, existing order says that the applicant shall submit a, you know, once once we have the uh, erosion controls and everything, submit a planting plan to the agent to be approved by the agent consistent with the Needham Conservation Commission guidelines for tree removal, which would require a two to one replacement of all the trees at two and a half, half inch caliper um, and choosing a mix from the, from the uh, replacement tree list. Okay, um, and um, the trees, um, the nine or 10 trees, are which in which buffer zone? Um, they are all, with the exception of two, outside the 50. There's one here. I've got my pointer here, if you can see it. One here and one yeah. here. That one says three inch. I don't know which one that are. Cherry. The, uh, the observation, some of these were tagged to be removed because they weren't in good shape either. But uh, nonetheless, um, they've all been identified on the plan. So we have it all quantified what needs to be removed and the applicants yeah. perfectly fine adhering to the policy and doing the doing the right thing and personally i think the best thing to do is once we get um you know the erosion control line up maybe even take the trees down we figure the best places to put the trees and we pick the species to um, enhance the canopy within the buffer zone the best okay uh, another quick question of uh, the driveway um mm -hmm. Uh, I, I see it coming close to the 25 foot. Um, is it clear, clear from the 25 foot, that driveway? Yes, this area is in a lawn area right now. There's no chain, proposed change in grade. And um, any, I, it's hard to see with the trees. Any trees within the 25 foot? When well, you mentioned a couple, that there were a couple, most of them are, out, are outside the, the they're, they're, they're all yeah they're all outside the they're all outside the 25 foot there was two okay. 25 to 50. okay so um all right i'll, I'll stop so someone else can have can have right. more okay thank you thanks to uh, reed do you have any questions Thomas? yeah um i mean I, I guess i understand this was you know approved prior but um wh why is the driveway so long and you know, they just feel like you're kind of it, it unnecessarily extends into trees and other, you know, in, into the buffer zone. Um, well, it's it's set up to be its own home, and that's the way that the landowner wants to redevelop the property to maximize privacy and um, have some separation between the homes. That's a fair statement. This is Bud Jopton. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, uh, you know. It I, think, I think if you were to walk the site, you'd see the logic of that. It has to do with sight lines and buffers and privacy. Okay. Anything else, Reed? No, that, that, that was my biggest concern. All right, Fred? Um, I, I'm trying to see how steep the grade is. Um, is so it, um, it slopes down to the wetland, and um, it, looks like, it looks like the driveway probably uh, has an easement for the other property so that I can avoid the 25 foot buffer. 
Um, but I'm wondering how how steep that grade is where the driveway is and if there are any challenges that we ought to be thinking about uh, from that standpoint. So the uh, the driveway follows the existing grade as much as you can. I've zoomed in a little bit here on the on the uh, on the contours. So the the driveway be at the most at the steepest part where this little hill is. Um, let me see if I have a printed one. I do. I'm going to scale it off for you. I can't scale it on the on the uh, screen too well. But I have a I have a print right here on my desk. I'll just. I'll answer that question. I didn't. Uh, I didn't list all the slopes, but generally we wouldn't draw a driveway over eight percent grade. So, so there are no concerns about um, either runoff from the driveway uh, causing erosion or a need for grading activities to to prepare the base for the driveway no so what we're doing here is you can see by these contours we're tying them in and just making a level driveway the best we can and that we're following the topography to get to the the place where the where the home is okay now i see the bold the bold face uh to uh contour yeah. lines yeah okay. yeah we're just we're just bringing them up a little bit so it's require a little bit of preparation but there's no major for the driveway there's no major earthwork operation oh uh, fred can i can i jump in here a second of course uh, yes you know on the driveway in the in the um house itself it's greater than four thousand square feet and, uh, it, yes yeah, so uh, in order to comply with the bylaw, you need to uh, capture the runoff from the house in the driveway. And we're, um, I just, we're capturing the runoff from the home. I just read the bylaw again, and um, I think we're compliant. We're capturing, when the stormwater calc show that these, we're going to capture the entire roof, which is the equivalent of three inches over the roof area which is also, if you were to include the area of the driveway, would be equivalent to an inch over all of the new impervious area. Right, but you're not capturing, it doesn't seem like you're capturing any runoff from the driveway. And uh, I think that's required by the bylaw. But, you know, let's, let's continue. Uh, okay. Do you have any more uh, questions, Fred? Uh, no, thank, no, thank you. All right, Allison. So I just wanted to tell Fred that where the, the new contours are, it looks like it's maybe about a 6% or something, and it's about a foot yep. higher than the existing grade, right where the contours are. Yep. Um, so it's a little bit, it's a little bit above, just just because I just know how to read those plans. I'm a landscape architect. But um, so I thought that, um, David, you were talking about the order says this, the order says that. Isn't that order expired? Well, it is, but um, what we were hoping or what we would agree to was to just accept the, I, to minimize everybody's work okay. Okay. is to use the same, the existing order as the template for a new order okay. and merely commenting that, that um, some of the concerns have already been captured. Okay, so the one thing I would say is that typically now, um, I, don't, I mean, I think I was in the board in 2019, but I don't know. Typically now, we would ask for a planting plan. Okay. Um, you can adjust it in the field if it doesn't work, you know, once you take the trees down. But mm -hmm. I think that we usually, there is a, a replacement plan that shows what species you're doing. You don't wait until after you put the erosion control in and you get the order signed and everything. That's that's more typical unless okay. any of the, unless any of the um, other commissioners want to tell me I'm wrong. Um, I agree. Only comment. That's a, that's our current uh, practice. No, that's not a problem. So, um, as I said, we're we were you know first pass trying to trying to get the um, existing project approved like it was before. But what I'm hearing is you'd like to see the planting plan, either a planting plan or have it added to this plan. And I I don't think that's unreasonable. The other note that I have is we'll look into a little bit deeper into the stormwater management bylaw and um, determine if the driveway would require a little bit more mitigation as well. 
And if it does, we don't feel that that's a big issue either. Is the who I, I, I did read the bylaw while the other hearing was going on. Is the stormwater management bylaw is not new, is it? It's been around for, uh, I don't know, 10 years, eight years. Yeah, I, I, when I took a look at the calcs while the other hearing was going, it looked like we wound up right on the on the number to make it. Make yeah, it. and I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's five years old. Five years, yeah. And, it, you know, it, it is complicated. It does have a few in, ambiguous. Mm -hmm. It's not a problem. So, because I mean, it does, make it, it does make a difference uh -huh. between uh, a site that has a 4,000 square feet of impervious area versus greater than 4,000 square feet. It does. Yep. There's certainly that. And that, that, so, that so that's what I would focus on. If, yep. If so, you know, he, hey, hearing. Well, Hearing those comments, that's um, I have. We, we might have a few more comments. So let's, yep. Do you have any other comments, Allison? No, that's all. All right, um, Helena. I don't have any comments. Okay, and um, I I gave you my comments on the, a comment on the stormwater, uh, and again, I would uh, mirror what Allison said that. Uh, Currently, we ask for a planning plan um, with the application. So other than that, um, Deb or Clay, do you have any any comments, thoughts? Um, no, I think you you covered everything. OK. okay. Is, there any, is there anybody in the public? Uh, uh, yep, we do have uh, one hand raised. I'll move them over. Yes, good evening. Um, I'm attorney John Zajac uh, of, of Taunton, Massachusetts. I'm here on behalf of Pamela Shaw. Um, she is the abutter to the north. Um, and we just had a, a couple of um, questions or concerns that we did want to raise as well. Uh, and actually, some of the commissioners did um, focus in on a few of the uh, thoughts that we had relative to this. One was the, uh, the length of the driveway uh, where it... Um, uh, continues uh, all, all the way past the length of the wetlands rather than uh, approaching the house from a from a different perspective. Uh, it uh, I, there, there may be aesthetic or practical reasons for that, but it does seem that the driveway and house could have been reconfigured in a way that it would have been a shorter driveway and further um, away from the, the 50 foot line at least. Um, and Actually, let me let me answer that question. Um, the house is located in order to, as uh, stated earlier, to create a sense of privacy between the, the two houses. And that driveway has actually been sort of needled in there to avoid any conflict with the existing regulations. So uh, including the uh, side yard and, and rear uh, yard setbacks. Uh, so what you're looking at is a plan that basically has considered all of the regulatory considerations here and, and kind of threads that needle of, of satisfying the requirements has been um, you know, described by, by David. I understand that. It just, it seems to me that if the, uh, I'm assuming that the apron for the driveway is, is a garage, is that the, the proposed garage on that side of the house? Yes. Yeah. Um, so, what if it were flipped and the garage was on the southeast side of the house instead of on the northwest side of the house? It then moves the footprint into violation with some of the criteria that we're trying to satisfy. Um, do you know which ones? I would I would defer to the engineers on that, but you look at the. The delineation of setback lines, wetlands, the whole nine yards, and the the reality is that if you want to preserve some privacy for both houses on the property, 
you don't have a lot of options as to where else this footprint could go. It's been studied, you know, up and down for years. And I'm an architect and I can tell you that what we're showing here is a, a, a rational and defensible location for that footprint. Okay, I mean, and again, I'm not even necessarily suggesting that the footprint of the house would have to change, just the configuration if the garage was on the southeast side and the driveway met it there from either direction. Then you have the driveway crossing in front of the house, which is what I've been trying to avoid. There's a beautiful view shed that comes off of the front of that house right now, down through the balance of the property to encumber that with uh, a driveway that cuts across that few shed is something that uh, that that I, I can't agree to. All right, so that that's I guess that's what I was trying to understand. So it's it's, it's to preserve the view for an aesthetic reason then. So wh which direction is the view? That's what I'm trying to understand from the plan. Um, on the front side of the house, envision a view. Take, take the long access of the building. Mm -hmm. Just sort of draw a line all the way down uh, beyond the existing house. And that's generally where the view shed is. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. Okay. Um, the, the other thing that was mentioned by the commissioners is, um, is the elevation. So it does appear that it, it's about um, a 10 foot change in elevation from around the top of the driveway down to the, the lowest point um, from about 160 to 150. So it does it does appear to be pitched in general towards the wetlands. And I um, I understand that may be why there was some concerns about runoff from the driveway if all of the recharge is being captured only from the uh, from the roof of the house. Actually, I think that the direction of runoff is more top to bottom rather than side to side toward the wetlands. Um, is there any plans of how the driveway is going to be crowned or pitched to direct water that is coming off the driveway? I think we're looking at a you know a normal standard of, of soil treatment to the driveway. Has it been defined? No. Will it be defined in a responsible way? Absolutely. So in answer to the to the question about the grades, we're following the existing grades and disturbing the grade in the landscape as little as possible. No, I, I understand that, but I I just wanted to point out that the grade does seem to if if there was water coming on down the driveway, it would be heading towards the wetland because of the grade. I don't I don't believe so. You know, I defer to David on that. Yeah, but... I mean, in, generally speaking, the you know, ultimately, most runoff winds up in the wetlands. I mean, it's not a, it's just a statement. I mean, there's no no need for any response. The water will ultimately wind up in the wetlands. Yes. Um, would it be possible to put um, something along the the driveway <laughs> that would would capture some of that um, infiltration instead? Instead of what? Um, so that it would it would go into the ground there rather than into the wetlands. It, yeah, it could be possible. That's what I'm asking. Like perhaps a stone trench on the wetland side of the driveway. If it's if it's if it's flat or crowned so that some of the water is heading towards the wetlands, would it be possible to capture it in a stone trench rather than have it continue towards the wetlands? I defer to the engineers to determine whether that's necessary. You we know, have my, my we knowledge. Have, Go ahead. Have, I, I point out that uh, the applicant is uh, already said that they were going to review this in the context of the wetland bylaw as well. Yep. Okay. Um, I I see that there's going to be a landscape plan that's going to be submitted. Will that be before or after the public hearing is closed? Before. Okay. Um, uh, would you only be using native wet uh, native landscaping in the uh, in the hundred foot buffer? We would be using um, a, a mix of trees since we need more than four. Um, 
replacement trees native to New England, there's a list at the, path, at the back of the Needham Conservation Commission guidelines for tree removal of what we would um, replace the trees with. Okay. Um, and I guess my, my last thought is um, for the, um, would it would it be practical uh, where the compost sock is to inst uh, to also have um, an orange construction fencing just during the construction so that the that line is more visible while construction is going on. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Those are the only questions or comments that I had. I, I thank you all for your time. And again, um, not not trying to be an obstructionist at all here. Just wanted to raise some some concerns that uh, that my client had. Um, we're still, you know, we we understand the projects going forward. We just wanted to um, address a few issues. Thank you very much. Those, those are fair questions, John. Yeah, thank you, John. All right, uh, any other comments or questions? Um, Sue, Sue yes. has her hand up, yeah. yeah. I, I have two questions. You're breaking, it looks you're, you're like breaking up. Oh, I am breaking up. Yeah, your voice is breaking. Up. Can you hear me now? Yep. Um, the nine to ten trees that are taken down, that plan to be taken down, um, for the purpose of putting in the driveway. Is that correct? Most of those trees are being taken down for the purpose of putting in that driveway. Is that correct? Uh, I think the majority of them are. It looks like at least one is a little bit away from the driveway and might have just wanted to needs to go, but. Um... Yes, the purpose, the the intent of the tree removal within the buffer zone is is to uh, provide a driveway. Yes. Okay. Uh, second question is, um, with the replanting plan. Well, I I I would uh, be definitely in favor of some kind of stone trench. What was suggested, um, because it is so close. Uh, a large a part, a large part of the driveway is so close to the wetlands. Um, but I'm thinking of the replanting plan also um, for you know erosion control there. So I guess it would depend on the replanting plan also where those trees are going to be placed. Um, uh, I, I'm, I am concerned a little bit about the um, runoff from the the driveway. That's okay. It, it, um, it, the wetlands are just so close. But I'll stop there. <laughs> yeah. Our, well, they're going to take another look at that in the uh, you know. Okay. Think. We'll get to a point that everybody agrees. Um, any other comments? All right, so uh, let's continue this hearing to um, February 22nd. Can I have a motion to continue the uh, hearing for 731 South Street, DEP file 234-920? Motion. Second. All right, let's vote. Uh, Sue? Aye. Reed? Aye. Red? Aye. Allison? Aye. Polina? Polina? Aye. Okay, and the chair votes on. All right, so uh, thank you, and we'll see you in a couple of uh, We might as well do the um, COC at this point. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's basically the project was never done. So that's what you're going to be closing out. All right. So uh, we'll just have a motion to close out the, uh, was it 731 South Street? What was the deep? Yeah, it's um, 824, 234, 824. Okay. A motion to close out the uh, certificate of compliance for um, 730. Motion to close. Second. All right. Let's vote Sue. Aye. Reed. Aye. Fred. Aye. Allison. Aye. Alina. Aye. And Chair votes aye. All right. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, the next item on the agenda is 33 Border Road, DEP file 234-921. And this was uh, continued, I, I think it was because of a, 
uh, issue with the uh, about our notification, but I assume that's been resolved. So we have uh, Ryan. You were going to present this too. Yes. Okay. You all set? I can take over. Yep. All right, perfect. Uh, just again for the record, Ryan Rosine, I'm with Goddard Consulting here on behalf of the applicant, and I'll uh, share my screen and I'll share the the plans with you all. You guys can all see these plans, okay? Yep. Okay, perfect. So here we have 33 Border Road. It's an existing single-family house. Uh, you have Rosemary Brook uh, to the north here. Um, there's an existing single-family house in between our property and the in the brook, and then there's also a house directly across the street uh, between the brook and the roadway. Kind of goes through it, and Rosemary Brook goes underneath uh, Border Road. So what I'll zoom in a little bit for you, but um, so what the applicant is proposing to do is add um, two additions. This first addition here, which is shaded, is a second story addition completely over the existing footprint of the house. Uh, so there's no additional impervious surfaces um, extending anywhere else on the house. The second portion of it is adding this one story addition off the back of the house, which is approximately 140 square feet. It is completely within lawn, existing lawn here in the backyard. Um, and there's also, you know, existing other structures here, all within lawn. Uh, the entire lot is is either developed or or basically all lawn, um, with a handful of trees kind of throughout the area. So here we have the hundred foot riverfront zone right here, the inner repairing that kind of cuts through this northern portion of it. Just a little bit of the site was in the hundred. And the rest of it is within the 200. Here's the 200 line way out here. So the entire property is within riverfront area. And so with meeting the regulations, we're proposing to uh, two to one uh, mitigation ratio uh, for the 140 square feet of uh, this addition here within lawn. And so what we're proposing is this planting plan that was submitted. It's proposing to um, add 280 square feet uh, to the to the right hand side of the house when you're looking at the house from the street. So there are a few non-native shrubs in this area, and so part of it is to remove these and add in um, native shrubs. And so we're adding in three service berry and three high bush blueberry. And then the rest of these areas that you see here in the green is a uh, herbaceous plugs that we're going to put in. So we're going to do two different types of milkweed, uh, goldenrod, and smooth oxeye. Um, so, and just as a note, um, since we were talking about it previously in the last two ones, um, for the stormwater bylaw, you can see down here, increase in footprint is 8.3%, which is, you know, below the 25% threshold to trigger your stormwater bylaw. Um, there aren't any trees proposed to be removed as part of this, um, so that um, isn't needed either. Um, and it's, you know, pretty straightforward. It's all within existing lawn. It's a small addition off the back of the house. Um, so I'd be happy to answer any questions that you guys have. Okay, thank you, Ryan. Um, let's uh, see if the commissioners have any questions, comments, Sue. Uh, no comment. Reed? Nothing from me. Brad? Uh, no questions. Allison? Just check that helianthus. It might get incredibly tall. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's, okay. the, if that's the species I'm thinking of, but there's one that gets to be like eight, eight feet tall. So just, just, just for your Yeah, mind. I think, I think, it, especially on this side of the house, the the homeowners don't really use this side of the house, so they're okay with letting it, you know, go There's completely call, sort right? of natural area. So, okay, but yeah. we'll double check on that. I mean, I'm glad you're using it. It's just huge. <laughs> yeah. No. I. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, Paulina. Do you have any questions? No comments? questions. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have any questions myself either. Uh, looks pretty straightforward. Uh, Sue, uh, excuse me, uh, Deb or Clay? Anything? Yeah, I have a few things. Okay. 
Um, so they didn't actually delineate Rosemary Brook for this. You can see the note on there that they estimated on um, the location of the can you, uh, yeah, can you go down? Yeah, they estimated it from a land court plan. Um, you know, which which is fine. It's this on the web. Oh, the reason, really I'll just say the reason for that is because it was on, you know, other people's I know. properties. So. I know, that's why I'm, just let me what, finish. What's the approximate distance? Um, so that's the 100 foot from the land court plan. And um, so it is channelized um, in that area, and there isn't any BBW associated with it. So it's likely uh, pretty accurate, um, but I want to let you know that we're not going to be approving the delineation for this. Um, DEP did have a couple comments on this. Um, they mentioned that they wanted to see all the resource areas and buffer zones on the plan. So there, there should be a note that the um, the hundred foot riverfront area line is also the hundred foot um, line to the bank of the stream, because that's also a um, a resource area, the bank. So I'm guessing that's what DEP is talking about. And they also requested that they try to locate the mitigation area within the inner 100-foot riverfront area, as opposed to on the other side of the house. Um, what else? Oh, I don't know. So there's a 280-square-foot planting area, and there's only six shrubs proposed. Um, Allison, are you happy with that, or do you think that's a little thin? Could I see the planting plan again? I thought there were more than that. Yeah, I'm sure. No, there's, no, there's six. For shrubs. Six. Yeah, it's just DEP spacing guidelines, which is what we use. So that's all it kind of that's all it called for. Yeah, I mean that's not very many. They're really, I mean, I mean, hypo spruber gets to be like a tree. The other, the other one is I don't call them shrubs. I really call these almost small trees, very big shrubs. Mm. So, so you're happy with the sex? I'm okay with that. If you if you have if you if they're made to do planting on the other side, I mean this is where the sun is. If you look at how the orientation is, um, mm -hmm. you know they have sunny plants. So if you do if you make them do it on this side, between the fence and the house, it might be shadier. Even though the garden is there, I mean I could be wrong, but that's kind of the north side, isn't it? Yeah. So this this here is this side is the north side. Yeah, I can so I can. I'd have to be different plants if you if you have to do if you have to do stuff there. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The, the main reason why um we chose not to do it in the inner 100 foot is one, you know, you already have some, you know, shrubs and trees over here along along the fence line near the existing garden bed. And also the sewer easement. Uh we didn't want to have to try to, you know, put in, you know, 280 square feet, kind of mix match it in, kind of all in here. And then, you know, down the line, something happens and they rip up the mitigation area, um, something like that. So we we thought over here would be better since the, it, you know, the homeowners don't use this area, you know, they're, they're okay with it kind of going all natural and, you know, expanding, you know, beyond sort of what's even proposed, sort of, you know, letting it go naturalized um, as required. So Deb, why is there a drain in the middle of the lawn? That? Yeah. I'm I'm not sure why that's there or how you know how long that's been there, uh, but apparently it's, it's not a low spot. Is it coming from? Is it somehow a clean out from something coming out of the the house, like a sump pump or something? And then that's a that's a, so you can get to it and clean it out. I mean, it's there's it's not it's not functioning as a drain if you look at the grade. Right. That's correct. That is the sump pump ejection. Okay, well that's interesting. No mm -hmm. one talked about that. So, and know. and just as another comment, um, to for another reason and for the hundred foot, I understand that DEP would you know they want to see it as close to the river as possible. However, another reason why we don't feel like it's incredibly necessary, in addition to what I spoke about earlier, is that this is all the area in between here and the river is lawn and developed houses roadway so 
Um, we felt that it didn't make a huge difference to the resource area of where within the property or within where where in the 100 foot or 200 foot riverfront area it was planted. So Deb, I have a question for you. Uh, was, was the DEP mandating moving the uh, plantings or that was just a suggestion? Yeah. Yeah, these are are just recommendations that they give you. Okay. Um, and you mentioned something about delineation of the brook that has to be done, or you want you wouldn't approve it, or could so you... they didn't actually place flags. So I'm not going out and looking at flags and either approving a delineation or not. So you can still permit the project but we need to state that the permit does not include approval of a delineation. Okay. Is that because it? there wasn't one done. That's that's fine with us. We don't need the delineation to be approved as part of this project. We're okay with you know it not being approved. Okay. Any uh, any other comments? Is there any comments from the uh, public or anybody with their hand up in the, from the public? There are no no hands raised. Okay. Any further comments? No. Do we? Uh, somebody want to make a motion to close this hearing uh, for thirty three Border Road DEP file two thirty four dash nine twenty one. Motion to close. Second. All right. Let's vote. Uh, Sue. Aye. Reed. Aye. Red. Aye. Allison. Aye. Alina. Aye. And the chair votes aye. Okay. So we won't be issuing till the next meeting. You have to do the exhibit A still. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, Ryan. And uh... all right. Um, just a, a point uh, as well. <clears throat> Deb, did you want, um, or I guess the commission, did you did you want the plans revised just with the additional buffer zone notations as well for the DEP comment. Yeah. Just that, just to add the uh, 100 foot buffer zone to bank that label. That's what I'm assuming they're talking about. If you want to look at their comment on the. Yeah, um, I, I did see their comments earlier today. I did look at them so we can we can add. And that that's in. the only thing that I could think of. Yeah, same here. Um, yeah, there's there's no issue in um, adding that and getting the plan to you before. You know, before you guys actually issue the order of conditions. That's exactly, I only mentioned it so that it could be incorporated, the, the revised plan could be incorporated into that order of conditions. All right, great. All right, thanks, Ryan. All right, thank you guys, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Evening. All right, so uh, what's next? The uh, South Street water line replacement discussion is who is here to discuss that project? It's a town project? Yeah, Artie Rappi from the engineering department is here. Okay, Artie. Uh... Yeah, hi. Uh, are you guys able to see the screen? Yep, I see it. Uh, so um, I was trying to share the other one. Hold on a second. Um, the colored one? Uh, so I am assuming, hold on a second, I'm trying to see the whole screen in here. Okay, so uh, the reason why we are in front of you is because uh, uh, the town is putting for bid this project for replacing a 16 inch uh, water main on South Street. Uh, uh, it, the, the project goes from Wilson's Lane all the way to Chestnut Street. Uh, I did provide the commission with a, a marked up copies. Uh, what we have done is that uh, whenever we were um, within a hundred feet of the buffers, we have put erosion control barriers uh, uh, in red, you will see where we believe the wetlands to be, and in oh. yellow, it's the... Is it really, uh, yes. 
can everybody see your screen? I I just see no, it. we, we just see a little sliver of something already. We don't see the plan. Hold on a second, let me try it again. It was working before and then it shifted. There we, oh, we just had it. Can I take it? How about now? Good. That's it. Okay, perfect. Sorry for that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, let me zoom. Uh, as I said before, we are starting, uh, we are replacing a 16 inch water main on South Street from Chestnut Street all the way to Wilson's Lane. Uh, at the end of December, I believe uh, Justin, the assistant town engineer, uh, uh, did a presentation with the commission informing them of the upcoming projects. And this was one of them. We have more complete plans at this time. Uh, the reason why we are in front of you is to kind of highlight uh, what this project entails. Uh, we believe that uh, this project would be covered under the general permit that we have for doing work on and maintaining the infrastructure and the roadways in the town of Needham. Uh, I did share the plans with Deb and Clayton. We have looked at them. Uh, but nevertheless, we wanted to make sure that the commission understood what it is that we were going to do. Uh, in red, we have shown where the wetlands are, and in yellow would be the 100-foot buffer. As you can see, whenever we are doing work within a 100-foot wetland buffer, we have proposed erosion control barriers. Um, Basically, we're going to dig out the, uh, the uh, a trench and we'll replace the, the existing uh, water line with a new water line. Um, in here is uh, one thing that we are being doing at the same time, and we the town intends to implement even further more on future projects, uh, BMPs. Uh, we are trying to improve uh, the water quality or the runoff from the streets, uh, rather than have it just going directly into the wetlands. We want that water to be treated first uh, and held in chambers so rather than just have surface water. Uh, Deb did not have a problem with what we were proposing. However, uh, we would like that in the future, whenever we are doing projects, uh, that are within conservation jurisdiction uh, that to, uh, hopefully we can run it by Deb and show her what it is that we are trying to do rather than have to come in front of the commission for every uh, project that we go in. Uh, the intent is uh, to keep everyone informed, but at the same time to not to slow the projects up. Uh, on this particular location, we are putting uh, a BMP, which is outside the jurisdiction for Conservation Commission, uh, which is near number 1230 South Street. Uh, as we keep on going further down, uh, some of the work is outside the 100-foot buffer. And then as soon as we go inside the 100-foot buffer on other locations, uh, you will see that we have proposed the erosion control barriers. Um, the same thing in here, outside the 200 foot from the river, we have a BMP uh, installation on this uh, corner outside the 200 foot buffer, but then we have another one that is uh, within 100 feet buffer from the wetlands and from the river uh, from Farley Pond, uh, which uh, I, I will show you in another detail. Uh, again, this is again the 16 inch water main replacement. Uh, and what we wanted to show you is what it is that we're planning on doing. Uh, so this is gonna be uh, uh, one of the standards that we plan on using in the future. Uh, so where we have a, a, a catch basin currently, we're planning on installing a, a dry well, uh, or a manhole with a four foot sump so that we have a, 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 an, a way to access and remove the debris. Uh, and at the same time, whenever we got a roadway with that we're gonna put an infiltration system, we intend to put the uh, granite curbing uh, with infiltration system on the side of it. 
in this particular location, uh, we have marked up, this would be the 100 foot, uh, this would be the wetlands and the 100 foot buffer. Uh, one set of chambers will be installed inside the 100 foot buffer. The other one will be outside the 100 foot buffer. These are locations that we are, don't intend to cut any trees. They are on the side of the road. They are inside the right of way. We believe that uh, this work, it will help uh, with the quality of water that goes toward the wetlands and is for improving the infrastructure. And it's our belief that uh, this should be something that if the commission, in this particular case, we are outside the, the, the uh, uh, the the project. So the limit of project on South Street that I indicated did not include this BMP that we are doing that is further down on South Street and is nearby 13 or 2 South Street. There are wetlands on both sides and we're going to be putting chambers on the side of the road, again, inside the right of way, but these chambers are like similar like milk crates type of structures that you it, it will give a chance to hold up the water and improve on the quality of water that uh, ends up going toward the wetlands. Um, this is another scenario that we have again it's outside the, the scope of work but when we're putting it this project for bid uh, we have this as an alternatives. So even though they are outside the scope of work where we are replacing the water main because the manpower will be there, uh, we want to use the uh, this particular project to see if we can improve the water quality even further down outside the exact scope of work on South Street. And if the numbers are so that allow this project to move forward, then we'll add this couple of items. Uh, if it is that we don't have the funds, then we are not going to do this additional outside uh, water main project. So uh, the, one of the things that I would like the commission to consider is uh, for this drainage uh, uh, structures that we are putting on the side of the road, is it possible that commission can uh, agree tonight to allow uh, uh, the projects, future projects to move forward with the understanding that nothing will move forward without Deb's approval, the director's approval, but avoid having to come to an actual hearing at night and discuss something that it's already uh, to the commission's satisfaction. So I, if you have any questions, I'll, I'll be happy to respond. I, I got a question for Deb. Um, like this work is uh, exempt from uh, the uh, application permitting process. So work that is done within the existing roadway um, is is considered exempt. Okay, but not outside the existing ro roadway. Um. Well, this is infrastructure work because you got drainage that is on the side of the road, we're just improving the drainage that is part of the road. It's not that we are, you know, adding something or make, so I would understand if we were making the road wider, mm -hmm. and now we have to come in front of the commission because we are making the road wider. But if you have a catch basin and we just putting a structure to clean the water that is on the edge of the road, it seemed to me like, you know, I, I'm sure that the consultants will love to spend <laughs> the time and the money to come in front of the commission. Yeah, yeah. No, I just, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not necessarily saying that, you know, you know what, what the process should be. I, I'm just asking some question. Yeah. If it's technically exempt or, or not, because I, I can't remember the exact wording of the, uh, of the bylaw, but maybe that's something we can check. Um, yeah. I don't know. Does anybody else have any questions uh, on the on the commission? Uh, Fred, you got your hand raised. Yep. Uh, yeah. Well, it's commendable if the if the if the uh, intent is to go above and beyond what's uh, absolutely required by the by the law. So um, this this is nice to hear about. And uh, am I right? BMP means best management practices. That's correct. That's correct. That's right. right. To improve would, the water quality, I wouldn't. Okay. I wouldn't conclude that this is 
beyond the law because Needham does have to comply with their uh, stormwater permit and their stormwater permit includes installation of B. Yeah. And the other thing is that we have to remove phosphorus and we have to improve uh, the water quality that we are mandated to do. So, so my next, yeah. So my next question was, are you are you planning to measure uh, somehow whether this does improve or how much it improves? And that and the other last question was whether these um, systems require cleaning out any of the filtering mechanisms. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So the, the way it works is it's already proven that this uh, measures work because they are approved technology by DEP as far as the standards of engineering, as far as uh, cleaning the water. There is a maintenance process that goes along with them. So what's happening is that uh, as time goes by, the reason why we have uh, a four foot sums on, on some of the projects is because we want the debris to, to collect on the bottom of that manhole. And every few years, I mean, ideally every year, we want the the, uh, the the highway team to go there and open the cover and take out the debris, similar to what you do for catch basings. But what's happening is that by, by adding this additional infiltration, it helps on the quality of water and it, on the infiltration of the system itself. So the quality of water coming out from the roads is being uh, treated rather than uh, going toward the wetlands or going toward town land being un untreated. Uh, the, what, we are what we are trying to achieve tonight is uh, try to eliminate some of the red tape, meaning that uh, asking the commission to possibly give the authority to the director and Clayton so that once we present them a plan to say, okay, on such and such street, we're going to do this. As long as Deb is happy and Clayton is happy, we can move forward with the project rather than have to come to a meeting to just show you what it is that we are doing, because we believe that this is so de minimis that it should be allowed. But uh, we didn't want it to assume, so we are in front of you with yeah. an open mind, that's all. Yeah, I understand that. So I, I again, I still, the question is still, you know, whether this uh, activity is exempt or not. And uh, I, I just don't, I don't know the answer to that at this point. Yeah, yeah I'll look into it. Um, I'm assuming that, you know, these infiltration areas aren't, you know, going to be in our jurisdiction for most of the time. I'm guessing that they'll usually be outside our jurisdiction if possible. That's correct. Um, there are some so, locations that you have to, like, if you look at this particular location, you have mm -hmm. wetlands on both sides and this is the low spot. So you yep. want to collect the water where the existing catch basins are. We are keeping the existing catch basins. We're just adding more storage capacity outside of the catch basin itself. Right. So I'm comfortable in, you know, areas that they are going to be in our jurisdiction um, to review it, you know, go do a, a quick site visit. Um, if there's no tree removal um, or any, you know, natural vegetation removal, then, um, you know, I'm happy to to approve that and I can just add it to kind of a, you know, a agent's report kind of thing so I can let you guys know, um, so you know, where they're going to be working without them having to come, um, you know, and, and do a presentation. But is, I can. Is this something we can do? We can approve without getting into trouble with the state or whatever? Because if it is, you know, I think, you know, I'm okay with it. I think others would be okay with it. But yeah, I think it's okay. Um, is it something we have to vote on? No. I don't believe so. It just, we want it to be upfront. That's all. So he's uh, just kind of looking for a, a policy, I yeah, think. I mean, yeah. I, personally, I'm okay with it, but I just, you know, my recent uh, experience with DEP uh, is yeah, I know. 
it's, it's, I'll, I'll do a little more research into it and I'll let you know the next meeting. Yeah. Um, I don't know if any, what I find any other commissioner have. I, have, I have a question. Yeah. Um, so if it's not within our jurisdiction, you know, I totally get it and I'm all for not for reducing red tape. But I do have a question and kind of a concern is that there is there is there any a project like this is going to affect a lot of people. I'm one of them. Yeah. <laughs> I live in Wilson Lane. Yep. And I take the train every day. So into work into work. So if you don't have a public forum, that none of the people who are affected by it will know what will ever see what it is. And that's not our jurisdiction. That's just I'm talking as a citizen. Well, and uh, that's another question. I'm wondering about how do they know about it? How do they know? you know, the schedule and do you know what I mean? Like this is an well, open forum where people can come and ask questions. That's all. Well, so uh, what's going to happen is once do we get the project underway as far as, because this is a couple of capital improvement projects. So it's already been voted to be constructed. Once we have uh, a number from the contractor of how much uh, they, it, they are willing to do the work for, once we know that we have the budget or for how much of the road we have the budget, then the next step will be will the, the neighbors, the, the abutters will be notified uh, as far as when the work will start and when is expected to end. It's going to be signs, it's going to be detours. There are 20 pages that are included on, on this package that we are filing with the town. Uh, in our case, we coming in front of Conservation Commission, we believe that this work is for maintaining the existing infrastructure and the existing roadway, and we are already covered under the, the current uh, permit that we have for doing work in town. We are not uh, cutting any corners, so whenever we are doing work with putting erosion control barrier, we are not just want to do the work, we, we will run it by the director of the conservation commission what we are and if it is the depth feels that no on this particular project i would rather have the commission decide we'll be happy to to come but if it is that we have done all the measures that deb is happy with and clayton is happy with to avoid having to come on a on a yeah. meeting for a road infrastructure that's all yeah we understand that so i i, I don't think uh that the commission has any objection to what you're proposing. Thank you. If somebody well, I'll that. look into it some more. Yeah. Artie, okay. can you stick around for one minute? Of course. Okay. All right. So uh, thanks, Artie. Oh. The uh, next item on the agenda is Can I just interject real quick? Oh yeah. Sure. Um because Sue had contacted me um and so did Kate and Katie about um, some stakes that, um, some survey stakes that are on the conservation property adjacent to the foster property. And they asked me to find out what the staking was because it's it's on our property. And um, Sue later contacted me because she is friendly, I guess, with one of the abutters um, to the property. And she had sent me some pictures of the stakes that that have been the topic of conversation. So I asked Artie, because he is a, a um, licensed surveyor, what the stakes meant. So Clay will put up what the pictures of the stakes look like. So Sue, basically for your benefit, I'm going to have Artie tell you what these stakes mean, because okay. uh, he knows the lingo. Yeah, and sorry. then you can pass it on to your um, to your friend. Uh, Go ahead, Artie. Yeah. So based on my experience uh, and on the writing that is on the stakes, it appears yeah. that they are survey points. So they have nothing to do with the property line. They are points where the surveyor has put the instrument uh, to measure uh, survey. Uh, record point so uh, they have put the instrument on that particular point there is a piece of wood with a nail on the bottom that they are calling point number 15 that doesn't mean anything to you or to me but for the surveyor who's doing the work on the side 
uh, they are using that as a control point. So that's a control point for the survey itself is not a control point for that has any relevance to the property lines or wetlands or anything like that. It's just a, a traverse point. On our language, we call it a traverse point. So the Even title with a point is hub HDS stands for hub and tax set. So it's a piece of wood with a nail that it's on the bottom on the ground. And that's why they have put that symbol. The reason why they have the stake like that is when they come back a week later, a month later, three months later, it's easier for them to find where to put the survey instrument to measure angles and distances. Even if it's on someone else's property, i.e. the Conservation Commission property? Uh, so ideally, when we do survey work, we try to put the survey points uh, inside our own property that where, where we are working. But when they are in the middle of the woods, uh, it's hard to, to figure out where, where your property starts and where someone else's begins and sometimes uh, trying to move forward with a project uh, surveyors in the field might not pay sufficient uh, attention to where they are it's just that they are so involved on in locating certain points that this would be more convenient to have the point in and i i would like to give the benefit of the doubt that they didn't know that they were putting the point on someone else's property we are allowed to trespass to go into someone else's property to find a survey point, uh, but they are not allowed to damage the property. So uh, unless you feel that uh, they have done something wrong on the property or they have uh, damaged the property, I think this is minor. In my yeah. uh, what does the HPA stand for again, Artie? So H, H stands for hub. Hub is the piece of wood at the bottom of the stake, hub. Uh, okay. T stands for tack. Tack is the nail that is that they have put on the bottom on top of that piece of wood. S stands for set. So hub and tack set. So they have put a, a piece of wood that is uh, a foot long. They have driven it into the ground, is flash with the ground. And then on, on in the middle of that piece of wood, usually is an inch by an inch, a foot long. And in the middle of that wood, they have put a nail. And that is for accuracy. So when, uh, if you know the, the instrument, that, that the thing with three legs and the uh, yeah. the thing on top, so they measure the angles, that's, yeah. that's yeah. where yeah. they have put the point in. So that's a controlled point. Uh, in my okay. opinion, it's harmless, but... I haven't been on the ground. I'm just looking at the pictures. So I believe that's what that is. It's okay. common in the industry. There's also a tree that's been, um, one of those pictures show a tree that's been marked too. But Yeah, um, I think that's to help them locate, you know, where their stake is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sometimes they, they, they would put a nail on the tree to show as an elevation, as a benchmark. Uh, if there is any writing on the tree, then you can see more. But uh, I would I would say it's harmless because it's just a survey traverse. That's all. Thank you, Artie. My pleasure. Yeah. Right, Thank thanks. you, Artie. You get bonus points. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll add it to the list. Thank you. All right. All right. So. Uh, the Let's move move on. Uh, we got the order of conditions for 53 Heather Lane. Is that ready to go or no? Nope? Okay. Uh, we got the annual conference, MACC annual conference coming up. Yeah. Yes, so go ahead. Uh, March 2nd. Is, it's a Saturday, um, is the MACC Annual Environmental Conference. Um, you are all members of MACC uh, through the town of Needham. So um, we do cover the um, the fees for the educational programming. Uh, this year it is back in person at the, um, is the College Holy of the Holy Cross, Cross in uh, Worcester, Mass. Um, 
I believe I forwarded the schedule, uh, both the at a glance scheduling as well as the workshop descriptions um, that are being offered this year. So you're welcome to take a look at that. Um, we confirmed with uh, Elisa here in our office um, for signing up. I think in the past we used to take your preferences for what you wanted to sign up for and we'd sign you up. I think now uh, through the MACC website, um, you should have a a login or you should be able to create a login with the email address based on um, the commission information. If you need help with that, we can certainly take a look at that. But there's an option to sign up and select your workshops directly through your account on the MACC website. Um, and then there's an option for billing that says invoice uh pay by check or invoice um, for when towns are paying for you. So that'll provide you an invoice. I think they email it to you and they just forward it to us so that we can get it paid. Um, one of the things to kind of keep in mind while it isn't until March 2nd, one, a lot of the workshops can fill up the more popular ones. Um, so the sooner you sign up, the more likely you are to get what you're hoping to, to get if you decide to go. Uh, the other is that the sooner you sign up, the easier it is for us to pay the invoice if you decide you know, the week of the event or a couple of days before, um, there could be just payment issues. You, you might have a little bit of trouble signing up because the invoice has to come to us for us to create the PO to, to pay for it, so. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, I'm sorry, I have a question. So do you want us to sign up and then just, there's a selection where we can say bill to and then put an address, is that correct? I believe it, it um, it's a pay by check slash request invoice. And what they do is they email the invoice to your email. Then you just forward that email to us, forward that invoice to us via email. And then Elisa will get a PO based on um, how many people have signed up. And then she'll just take all the invoices and um, and submit those. So it's just you can sign up on your own, pick your own stuff and um, just forward the billing to us, essentially. And I believe that invoice email um, is sent to you as soon as it's processed by one of the staff members at MACC. So it's not necessarily an automated process, but it shouldn't take long to get that invoice after signing up. It just takes their eyes getting on it and confirming that there's availability in the workshops for you. And the other reason, so Lisa has taken some personal time off and she's has very limited hours so um you know the sooner we can get it in the, the easier thanks okay so one more one more item um regarding the uh, stormwater bylaw study committee or whatever it's called uh deb found out that uh this meeting is going to be hybrid uh whereas i think before we thought it was going to be uh, on Zoom. And I know that Sue had originally wanted to be on a meeting, but uh, be on a committee, but she didn't want to participate if it was on a Zoom. But now that it's hybrid, my understanding is that she would like to participate. And I know that uh, at our last meeting, we had nominated uh, Fred to uh, participate on the committee, but I spoke with Fred and he's he's fine if we transfer this appointment to Sue. And so if Sue is still uh, amenable to this, then uh, I suggest that we uh, nominate her for this uh, committee. Yes, and I, I hope everything's okay with Fred. Everything is absolutely okay with me. Yes, I'm glad you're going to get the chance to uh, get your feet wet, uh, so to speak. <laughs> no, you know I'm that you're on the climate committee, right, Fred? I I do, and okay. um, I um, I've I've missed meetings in December and January. It was during the health problems, the period that the family was going through. Um, but I, and I, um, I've signed up to get notifications, but I'm not sure I've, I've figured that out. Who would I talk to? Because after signing up, I then got an email saying I had successfully unsubscribed. So I obviously didn't. Why don't you let me, I'll, I'll get that straightened out for you. 
if you can make sure that I'm going to be notified when their next meeting is, because the minutes, the last, they didn't have minutes up yet for the January meeting. Okay. Thank All you. Right, I'll, I'll take care of it. I appreciate we'll that. Sure you're in the loop. Excellent. Thanks. Okay. So, so I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying, can uh, can I have a motion to appoint uh, Sue in lieu of uh, Fred to the uh, Wetlands Bylaw Study Committee? Is that what it's called? Yeah. Stormwater Climate yeah. Action oh, storm Committee. No, he's already on the Climate Stormwater action. Working Group, isn't it? Yeah, the storm. Okay, Stormwater Bylaw Working Group. So moved. Second. Okay, we'll vote Sue. Aye. <laughs> Reed. Aye. Fred. Aye. Allison. Aye. Helena. Aye. And a share did, vote. Did you hear what was going on, Allison? Sort of. Okay. So Sue's the, the stormwater representative at this point. You know, you know what I thought of? Do you think I'll be the only one in person? <laughs> No, I think I think in order to have a hybrid meeting that there has to be somebody uh yeah. you know, no, you won't be the only one. And I think yeah. that I'm part of this too by default too, so I'll plan to hang out with you. <laughs> That's so you'll know right? at least it'll be the two of us. Okay. Sue, um I don't Dave... act so excited. Huh? <laughs> Dave sent Dave sent me the um the uh, the guidebook uh, and I I had gotten part way through it. Uh, you're welcome to to my notes if you want them. Yeah, <laughs> and I, and I I did enjoy uh, learning about detention and retention basins and uh, it's it's been a it's been a useful study period. Oh, good. So, yeah. yeah so, so I'll send you the information that I had sent to uh, to Fred. Who has some background with this? Yes, so. I do. I actually is bringing some of my identity back, to tell you the truth. I oh. went through the bylaw. I reread the bylaw this morning. Yeah. No, I feel very comfortable with it. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So, uh, good. Uh, anything else? Anybody have anything else they want to discuss? Otherwise, let's have a motion to uh, close the meeting. What about, what about 53 Heather Lane? Oh, is that's... That that's kind of just a placeholder. We're yeah. still waiting for them to um, to give us the monitoring report and the and this you know to issue the COC before we will issue the OOC. Gotcha. All right. Okay. So motion to close. Second. Okay. Sue. Aye. Reed. Aye. Fred. Aye. Allison. Aye. Lena. Aye. And the chair votes aye. All right. Thank you, everybody. And thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good night